Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So what we have uh, told in the last lecture was the following that, that is what we want to prove today that if x bar is a local minimum of MP the math programming problem with inequality constraints only then the following system this system so there is m plus 1 inequalities this system cannot have a solution in cannot have a solution d in r n now how do we prove this fact so i'll just go to the board proving this fact So, on the contrary this is proved by contradiction a standard technique in mathematics. So, on the contrary I assume that D there, there exists D element of R n which solves the system. which solves the system, system means the system 1 this particular system which you which I have written down. So, it solves this system and now, so what we have is the following. Now, consider lambda strictly greater than 0 then take g i x bar plus lambda d for any d and then write down the Taylor's expansion. You are expanding in a Taylor series around x bar and then the error term actually it should be O of lambda norm d and uh, that can be replaced by O of lambda that is O of lambda norm d is same is, uh, is an O lambda quantity. So, just a little bit of analysis you need to do to show that they are this a small o, o lambda norm d quantity is same as a small o lambda quantity. So, show this fact as a homework. So, as a little practice of basic analytical using analytical tools. Now, what I do is here I break up as 1 minus lambda g i x bar plus lambda times g i x bar plus grad g i x 
Now, since x bar is a solution to the problem and g i x bar is less than equal to 0 for all i, this is for, for, for a each i, for, for each i this is true. So, g i x bar is less than equal to 0. So, 1 minus lambda, so if lambda is greater than 0 and lambda is sufficiently less than 1, when something is very less than 1, uh, you, you make this uh, sign. So, when lambda is very much less than 1, that is very near 0, then it implies that 1 minus lambda g i x bar is less than equal to 0, because this becomes non-negative or my positive basically. So, what I have from here is the following, I have from this equation I am writing this. So, actually this whole thing now, because this is less than equal to 0, this thing is now less than this part. So, I can now divide by lambda to write Now, because d is a solution to the system, this part is strictly less than 0, this whole part is strictly less than 0. Now, I can choose lambda as small as I like. So, this part is now because O lambda by lambda since, since O lambda by lambda is going to 0 which means that I can as I choose lambda smaller and smaller this quantity is vanishing, it is coming to at 0. Of course, this quantity could be negative, positive whatever in whichever way it is approaching could be on from the negative side, could be from the positive side it is approaching 0, it is in a neighborhood of 0. So, what happens even this is positive say it becomes so small as I make lambda very very small that this is a fixed negative quantity that the overall sum becomes negative. For example, I, this is minus 1 and this finally, I make it so small that it becomes say uh, 1 third or 1 fourth something like that. Then minus 1 plus 1 fourth would become minus 3 fourth. So, so for lambda greater than 0, and sufficiently small you have g i x bar plus lambda d. Now, how you will because for every i the lambda choice would be different. So, choose a lambda. So, there will be a threshold of lambda, there will be a lambda beyond whose after for any lambda below that value for a particular i this would be true. So, for each i there would be such a threshold lambda choose the one which is minimum and do it. This is a just a this is a standard sort of argument that you make in real analysis and so um, I expect the students to have some idea about real analysis in the sense that they should be able to make this sort of arguments. Unfortunately, I, I would again like to stress because this is a sort of a public lecture and so I would like to stress on one, one fact that this is a course on mathematical optimization and this is not just a course where you are talking about some modeling, some problems and their softwares. So, that course is better possibly delivered by someone who is in the forefront of applications especially from the departments of <laughs> management and or for maybe from the engineering departments. So, I would like to apologize and I would I, I like to ask for the viewers pardon that I am using mathematics which possibly is not of your liking, but I cannot help optimization is a mathematical subject. I am not doing any involved more involved stuff, stuff like calculus or variations or any other thing like infinite dimensional optimization. I am just remaining in optimization with derivatives, 
but mathematics is involved stuff and when an optimization is a mathematically involved stuff and you really have to go through these things. Those who are from the engineering background I am sorry that this is essentially a course in mathematical optimization it is the foundations of optimization and optimum of the foundations of optimization is, a, is based on heavy mathematics because it is a mathematical subject. Uh, so, uh, but there are a lot of insights which we will start giving once we establish the so called uh, free John multiplier con condition or free John necessary condition. So, this is true for all i equal to 1 to m. This implies that x bar plus lambda d means g i x bar lambda d is strictly less than 0 is, is feasible Now, uh, once I know this then let me go to the first part of the thing the first part is so D because it is a solution also also solves this. So, which means now I can write because D is a uh, element which is solving this system. Now, again we will take the help of the Taylor's expansion around x bar sorry, sorry there is no f i it is only f, have I written f i sorry there is no f i, I made a mistake it is only f there is no because there is only one objective. So, So, now f of x bar plus lambda d is equal to f of x bar plus grad f x bar lambda d plus o lambda small o lambda. So, this means now that f of x bar plus lambda d minus f of x bar by lambda is equal to grad of f x bar d plus o lambda by lambda. Now, this is strictly less than 0. Again by a similar sort of argument as before. So, we can conclude for lambda greater than 0 and sufficiently small f of x bar plus lambda d is strictly less than f x bar. Now, for lambda sufficiently small x bar plus lambda d is feasible to the original problem. So, this would imply that this contradicts that x bar is a local minimum. because uh, if I make lambda very very small I can bring x bar plus lambda d into the neighborhood because x bar plus lambda d is already we I know it is feasible and I can make lambda so small that x bar plus lambda d is in the neighborhood of x bar where that local minima holds. So, this contradicts that x bar is a local minima. is a local minimizer. So, this contradiction leads to the fact that this system please note those who have looked at f i might have question, but okay, this is a way place where you can't question. So, just have a look at this and so so this system would not have a solution and that is what we proved. Now okay if this system does not have a solution what can we conclude? In order to conclude something. So, if this system does not have a solution something has a solution. So, if, if we get something which would have a solution we can actually try to solve it and get our suspected point of suspected local minimizer. So, in order to do that we will now state 
something called the Gordon's theorem of alternative or theorem of alternative where basically there will be two systems of inequalities and among those two systems only one would have a solution at a given time in the sense that if one of them has a solution the other would have would not have a solution vice versa if the other has a solution the if prop system 1 has a solution system 2 has no solution if system 2 has a solution system 1 has no solution. So, just let me write down Now, let us look at what what are the two systems. So, let f 1 f 2 f m are convex functions on R n, convex functions on R n, finite value of course. consider the system we have studied a bit about convex sets and convex functions very earlier. So, we will just try to recall that we will try to see what is there how much we have done and then we will try to recall that the notions of basic notions of convex sets and convex functions and so that would help you in understanding this thing. Consider the two systems. and consider x to be a convex set in R n. So, this is one system where I am expecting that if this system is solve solvable means there is an x in this convex set x for which all of these gives me a value strictly less than 0 or else if such a thing is not this is one system and the second system is basically if this system does not have a solution this will have a solution that there would exist this is a system of the there would exist lambda element of R m plus and lambda not a 0 vector such that this quantity is greater than equal to 0 for all x in this is the Gordon's theorem of the alternative. It is called theorem of the alternative because the final statement is that both the systems cannot be simultaneously solved. So, that is the meaning of the word theorem of the alternative, theorem of alternative means I think people better use is to say theorem of the alternative. Theorem of the alternative actually means that there are two systems here and at the same time you cannot solve the system that is if you find an x for which the system 1 is solved you cannot find a lambda for which this will be true 
that is any lambda that you for which you say that this is true that such a lambda must be equal to 0. This has a lot of uh, interesting connotations in optimization and we will use this fact to get what, what is or what will be called as the Lagrange multiplier rule because let us observe one fact. In our system if what we have proved here, here we have a chain of inequalities which does not have a solution it is like our system one which does not have a solution. This is a function in D another function in D this is, this is a linear function and these are affine functions so they are convex function. So, here I will just take few minutes to actually uh, make a little bit of recall of your ideas of convex sets and functions because this is quite heavy stuff compared to what little stuff we had learned in the beginning. So, then we can see how to first use this to get the John multiplier rule or the John free John necessary condition and then try to give a brief sketch of how to prove this fact. So, here we go back once again to recall what you have here the definition of a convex set and a convex function. So, that is fine because uh, you see convex set is a set who with all its points contains all the line segment joining the joining any pair of points. So, whenever there are two points x and y in C the line segment joining them should also lie in C and this is the definition of convex function which for a nice looking convex function tells you that if you take two points on the graph and join it if your function is from R to R then uh, you will have. Uh, so, you, you will have uh, the line above the graph the, the, that chord you see we have studied a bit more about convexity we have given a list of examples about of which are convex functions here we have the famous quadratic function. Then what would happen if it is differentiable and the fact that for a convex function every look critical point is a global minimum and then we came to line such method that is enough for us to know. So, but the let us first try to apply what is there into our thing before knowing uh, how to prove it because to prove this you would require a thing called separation theorem. So, that proof or how the proof would go about for that particular uh, result I will just give an outline uh, keeping again in view that uh, of the broad the nature of the audience, but still it, it is it will be quite mathematically involved. But mathematically involved does not mean that if the word mathematically involved should not deter you because it is very important to know that if you love mathematics, mathematics will love you back and help you in your work. So, those who are doing other sciences and they have to use optimization I mean most engineering sciences they have to use optimization and you say that I want to shy away from mathematics it, it is very strange because if you go and look make a way, search on the internet a good number of mathematical optimizers are in engineering departments and many of them are had, tra had training in original tra training was in engineering and then of course, they did uh, different things. So, let us try to apply what is there. So, we know what is a convex function, what is a convex set and all these things. So, what, what is very important what, what important example of a convex set is a linear function. A linear function is so a linear function a linear function is a function f x which is given in terms of the inner product is a simple linear algebra fact which you can prove if you know what is the basis uh, basis of a vector space. So, then uh, this is a linear function if you add something to it for example, if you say some other real number to it then this becomes an affine function. So, this is linear and this is affine linear plus some stuff. So, you can show that these two are convex functions. So, in that sense go back to this one this is a linear function and this is a con affine function. So, basically what I am telling is that these two things does not have a solution. So, now I want to apply the result there on the board 
to this thing then what I would get? So, I would get a vector. So, if this system does not have a solution in D here D is in R n. So, my x is in R n and x capital X here is R n. So, there exists a lambda a vector which should contain we will put lambda naught for the thing corresponding to this lambda naught lambda 1 lambda 2 dot 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 lambda m this is in r m plus 1 and lambda is not a 0 vector. So, you will you will observe that this is a very important conclusion that this vector is not equal to 0 such that lambda naught into grad f x bar d plus summation i is equal to 1 to m lambda i grad g i x bar d plus g i x bar this whole thing that has to be greater than equal to 0 for all d in R n. Now, once this is true you simply have the following fact. So, I combine a lot of things and which you can do this little homework yourself which is a simple manipulation. Once you know this, set d is equal to 0 in particular, hence we would have So, d is 0. So, this is left. So, this is greater than equal to 0. Now, as x bar is a solution is a local is a local minimum, it would imply that for all i g i x bar must be less than equal to 0 for all i from 1 to m because it x bar has to be a visible set visible element and because lambda i are all greater than equal to 0 it is sorry. So, it is an R m plus. So, here I forgot to put the plus. So, it will be R m plus 1 plus. See all of these quantities that is lambda naught is greater than 0, lambda 1 is greater than 0 till lambda m is greater than equal to 0. That is the meaning of this is in R m plus R m R m R m, R m plus 1 plus. So, what I should have is that summation lambda i should be less than 0, but then this we have greater than 0 from here. So, it implies that summation lambda i g i x bar is equal to 0. Now, since each of them lambda i g i x bar is a negative quantity, finally, I will we will get the following implication that lambda i g i x bar is equal to 0 for all i. So, this implies
Now, it says basically a linear function is greater than equal to 0 over all over the whole of R n. So, not R n, R n. This fact this is not possible unless the function itself is 0, this is a simple fact. So, if A d is greater than equal to 0 for all d element of R n, of course, A is element in R n also otherwise you can't define any other product. This would imply that A is equal to 0. It is simply done by the fact that if you put instead of D, if, if you put minus A, because minus A is also in R n, you will get this. So, you, what you will get is minus norm A square is greater than equal to 0, which will give you norm A square is less than equal to 0, but norm A square is actually greater than equal to 0. So, this would imply that norm A square is equal to 0, which will imply that norm A is equal to 0, which will imply that A is equal to 0. So, in the same logic that we would do, we can show now that. So, this would imply that lambda naught So, this would now allow us to summarize what is called the John necessary conditions or the John multiplier rule. If x bar is a local minimum for m p, just this John multiplier rule is usually used by some people just to make it look similar with the what we call as a Lagrange multiplier rule, which was just for in equality constraints to which we will come in the next classes. And then we will combine both the equality and the inequality. M p, now this math we will all, all con we will consider all our functions to be a bit differentiable at the least could be continuously differential, could be twice continuously differential, but at least at the least differential e with differentiable data. So, it is a inequality constant program. Then there exists lambda such that number 1 as i have told you in the explain you on the board in the last class that this condition this condition is called the complementary slackness condition. At both g i and lambda i cannot hold with strict inequalities at the same time. If one is strict the other has to be 0. Now, comes the third and most crucial third and most crucial point the point is this. this cannot be 0, this is the most crucial point, the central point of the result. So, what does this say? What does this, this fact say? What does this fact say? This fact and this fact combines, it says that if x bar is a local minima, then you must be sure of one thing. is a set of linearly dependent vectors. Now, 
one might get worried about the fact that what would happen if lambda naught is equal to 0. Of course, if lambda naught is equal to 0, then okay, f is not a part of the problem, then such a problem or such a uh, multiplier is called uh, an abnormal multiplier. So, this set this set of so called multipliers with the objective and constraints is called the John multipliers. See the role of these multipliers is, is essentially to relate the coordinates the components of the vector x. So, relate the components of the vector x, so that you can actually find the solution that is the whole idea of the multipliers at the end when you just look at from a look at it from a computational perspective. So, this is called the John the set of John multipliers and then uh, if lambda not is strictly greater than 0 or 1 we just if lambda not strictly greater than 0 or just say lambda not is 1. Then, because if lambda naught is greater than 0, we can divide by lambda naught and basically the same thing, the same story remains. Then we say that we have a normal multiplier, that is a good case. If lambda naught is equal to 0, we say that the multipliers are abnormal. Now, it is important to know at a given x bar, there can be more than one multipliers which will satisfy the condition. Once you know the x bar, then essentially what you have to find, what does the thing says? that okay, if x bar is a local minima, it has to satisfy this condition means you have to find a lambda which satisfies this, this and this, okay, which satisfies this, this and this. Now, note this fact that even though I am getting there could be a situation, I, there could be more than one multipliers which will satisfy this. So, I could get a set of multipliers where lambda not is 0 and I could as well as possibly figure out a set of multipliers where lambda naught is uh, 1 or strictly greater than 0. So, the problem M p is called regular if at least one normal multiplier and if there are no normal multiplier we call the problem irregular. Now, we shall show in the next class with examples that okay, there will be a problem whose Fritjian multiplier could be there could be abnormal multiplier to that given solution could be a normal multiplier. That could be a situation where there are no normal multipliers and there could be a situation where there are only normal multipliers. But how do you assure, assure that there is a normal multiplier? for that you have to impose certain conditions. One of the conditions which come out very simply from this is that okay, if this is 0, then in order to maintain 3 lambda 1 to lambda m this vector cannot be 0. So, which means the gradient of g i x bar 
is linearly dependent. So, if lambda naught is 0, this gradients of the constants are linearly de dependent. So, on the contrapositive statement is that if these gradients of the constants are linearly independent, then we will never have lambda naught equal to 0. So, that statement that lamp the gradient of g i x bar are all linearly independent can be imposed on the constraints as a what is called as a constant qualification to get that I will never get a normal multiplier. Whenever if there exists a normal multiplier to this Fritz-John inequality system we said that the KKD condition holds or the karush kuntagar condition holds because we have already spoken about the karush kuntagar conditions and we have spoken about the Kuhn and Tucker's work of 1951 and here you see and then which is now can be viewed as a corollary to the free John system, free John or the John conditions. So, thank you very much, uh, we will come with examples in the next class.